Are you lately considering getting an Aramid fiber case for your iPhone? Yes. But don't know which one is the best to get? Yeah. That's right. Well, in this video, I'll be going over several of the best and most notable Aramid fiber case brands, so stick around and check out this review and comparison if you want to find out which case is the one you should get. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Tech Up. This time around, I really wanted to go ahead and check out some Aramid fiber cases for the iPhone and decided to go over six cases to let you see which one is the best to get. By the way, all these case brands that I'll be reviewing are highly recommended or reviewed, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a good idea on which one's for you. So if you've seen my recent iPhone case reviews, you know the drill. I'll first go over the design and features of each of these cases, and then I'll talk about the protection of them and go over the grip and fit of each. And since a majority of my case reviews are iPhone MagSafe cases, I'll once again be going over the magnetic ring on each since most of these are MagSafe cases. So to let you know how strong the magnets are with a series of shake tests with some MagSafe accessories. And then I'll perform some Gauss meter readings to determine the magnetic strength of each case. Cause who doesn't like MagSafe? I like it a lot. By the way, none of these case brands have reached out to me for this specific video. So rest assured, it's gonna be a honest review. However, the nice folks at ESR did reach out to me with their Halo Lock 3-in-1 wireless charger. This cool beast certainly offers all the charging features with multiple devices with strong magnets for your iPhone and AirPods so you can securely lock them in place. And there's also an Apple Watch charger stand once it's installed. So if you're looking to make a move from that 2-in-1 charging stand that doesn't have room for your Apple Watch, then look no further since this ESR 3-in-1 stand gives you not only additional charging, but other cool features like fast charging with their CryoBoost technology. Nowadays, most magnetic wireless chargers tend to make your phone run hot when they're charging on these stands, and it's definitely noticeable like on this Anchor 2-in-1 magnetic stand. While on the ESR 3-in-1 charger, the fan that's built into the magnetic stand, which includes angle adjustment, will constantly cool your phone throughout the whole charging process. So when your phone is fully charged, you won't have to deal with a hot potato like with the other chargers. By the way, the fan noise is pretty darn quiet when using it. Personally, I found the fan noise soothing when charging my devices near my bedside, but you can also turn the fan on or off in front of the unit. So, if phone heat is a concern for you and you'd like to enjoy a cool phone every time when using it while also getting a fast charge and being able to charge more devices, go check ESR out. I included a product link for this charger to their site down in the description below. And I'll also be using it throughout this video for some MagSafe tests to show you how it performs. Alrighty, so let's dive into this review by first going over the design and features of each of these cases. I'll be testing all of these out with my iPhone 14 Pro Max, but some of them will be available for older models, and I'll point that out throughout the video. Now I'll first be starting with the slimmer Aramid fiber cases, and the first one I'll be talking about is the later case, since I thought I might get this non-magnetic ring case out of the way before I start going over the other ones which do feature magnetic rings on them for MagSafe. However, since this case is so thin, you'll still have the ability to use MagSafe accessories with it, so don't worry about it not featuring a magnetic ring. But since it doesn't include it, the case is 0.6 millimeters thin and light as 10 grams. So it's easily one of the lightest and thinnest aramid fiber cases without a magnetic ring that you can get. Therefore, with this design, there are wide openings for the buttons on both sides for easy access, as well as nice big cutouts for the port and speakers at the bottom. The 100% Kevlar aramid fiber design on this case does stand out nicely with a nice pattern feel to it but it certainly attracts fingerprints and smudges. Now, one of the biggest features on this case, which isn't found on the other cases in this review, is the full camera protection that's included on the back for the whole camera, which really stands out and protects the mirrored portion of the camera around the lenses. As for the Pataka Mag Easy 3 and Pro 3, which I've recently reviewed and definitely wanted to include again in this video, considering they're such well-known Aramid fiber cases, these two are different from each other in terms of design and features, as the Mag Easy 3 is a slim and thin case that's similar to the later case, while the Pro 3 is a slightly thicker and protective version with a TPU frame for added drop protection. Now, unlike the later case, the Mag Easy 3 includes a magnetic ring, 
like on the Pro 3, and it still comes in almost as slim and light as its opposition. It also has the same types of cutouts for the buttons and openings for the bottom part of the case. However, the MagEasy Pro 3 offers molded buttons on its case for added protection. But personally, these buttons aren't the greatest, and after testing them out a bit longer since my previous review, they're still pretty stiff, and the travel ain't great. The power button is a little bit better, but the volume buttons have been really firm when using them. However, the cutouts for the speaker and port, as well as the ring and silent slider, are pretty good for the Pro 3. Moreover, both of these Pataka cases feature a raised lip for the camera without the full camera protection like on the later case, but I'll go over more of the protection soon. As for the aramid fiber on these cases, there's two denier options for the MagEasy 3 in 600 denier or 1500 denier. As for the MagEasy Pro 3, there's only a 1500 denier aramid fiber option and the differences between them is that the 600 will offer a different pattern design and will be more lighter than the 1500 option. Besides that, the bad thing about these cases is that they really show off major fingerprint smudges. That's nasty. Pretty easily. And as a result, you're going to be cleaning it more than the others in this review. As for the next case, which is the Mouse Limitless 5.0 in aramid fiber, it's noticeably redesigned compared to the previous Limitless 4.0 with newer buttons that aren't part of the case like on the previous Limitless case, but they're still clicky and offer great travel. However, they do seem a little loose compared to most independent cut buttons. Also, this case has a slightly new looking plastic frame that will fully protect your entire phone and it offers a different grip that I'll cover later. As for the cutouts on it, they are the same like on the older model with a nice big ring and silent slider opening and similar cutouts at the bottom. Now unlike the Limitless 4.0, this new version will include two eyelets for wrist straps on both sides of the case. And just like the previous Pataka cases I covered, this case offers a lip on the camera as well. Now in terms of the aramid fiber design, it has that similar design like some of the others, and it does get fingerprint smudges as well but personally, it's not going to be as bad as the previous Pataka cases. As for the next Aramid Fiber case that I reviewed, the Phone Rebel Flex 14 packs a unique design when compared to most of these cases. This Flex case, just like last year's, offers that same exposed edge design with only a top and bottom protected covered frame, and I'll definitely go into detail with regards to its protection later, but you probably already see the vulnerabilities of it. Now with this exposed design, the buttons as well as the ring and silent slider are easy to access. As for the port cutout, it's nice and wide and the speaker cutouts are standard when going over them. And when looking at the back of the case, the Flex 14 offers a slightly raised camera lip and raised edge guards on almost each corner for both the back and top part of the case. Now since I got my hands on last year's Flex case, I did notice a redesign in many parts of this model, especially near the camera lip. After using the Flex series last year on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, Phone Rebel made this specific area wider instead of thinner to prevent the case from cracking or snapping, like it did with mine, and it's definitely noticeable when looking at them. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, I no longer have the case from last year to show the crack, but it does show that Phone Rebel made some improvements on this case. And when it comes down to the aramid fiber weave design, I found it very similar to Mouse's case as both this and that case have a smooth and even finish. And like the mouse case, this Flex 14 attracts a good amount of fingerprints and smudges as well. Now, as for the last aramid fiber case I tested from Banks, their case offered a nice smooth pattern, dew point, Kevlar aramid fiber design on the back that was very similar to the Pataka Mag Z3. With these two, you can feel a little of that aramid fiber weave pattern, unlike most of these cases, aside from the later case. And when touching the back of this Banks case, what's even more noticeable is the oleophobic coating that Banks added to it. But don't let that coating fool you in believing that it's going to prevent less fingerprints and smudges over time. However, it was more easier to clean than the other cases in this review, thanks in part to that coating. Aside from all of that, the case is a fully enclosed case like the Mouse Limitless 5.0 and Pataka Maggi Z Pro 3, but the TPU plastic frame is more smooth and slick to the touch, unlike the others, so it's a little bit slipperier. It also features a raised camera lip on the back, and the lip is a lot more bigger compared to the other cases. As for the buttons on it, there are metal buttons that personally offer great travel and are very nice and clicky. 
They also offer similar style of buttons like on the mouse case, but they fit a lot better in this case than on the mouse limitless 5.0, with those being a little loose. As for the cutouts on it, the ring and silent slider has a really small opening, and same goes with the speaker cutouts at the bottom of the case. As for the port cutout, it's slightly bigger. Now, if you're curious to know what the protection is like on these cases, you probably have a good idea already on which one's better. And when testing them all out and looking at them, the mouse and Pataka Mag Easy Pro 3 offered the best protection out of the bunch, since both fully protected the phone on all sides and offered the best lip with the smallest amount of flex or bend, especially on the Pro 3. On top of that, the mouse Aramid Fiber Case features their AeroShock impact absorbing padding on the interior of the case with a slightly more raised lip on the front corners, while the Pataka Mag Easy Pro 3 features its air pocket padding on its interior. Furthermore, both offer microfiber lining with some differences, and the Banks Aramid Fiber Case offers that as well with a more felt type of material on the inside of it. Now the Banks case, by the way, also offers all-around full TPU frame protection, and it's right up there, or slightly behind mouse, and the MagEasy Pro 3 in protection, with its slimmer frame and edges, but it too offers little to no flex on the front, but the top and the bottom will have some. After those three, the last three are the least protective, with the Phone Rebel Flex 14 case offering decent protection, but only at the top and bottom parts of the case with an anti-shock silicone lining and anti-shock bumper padding on the inside. But compared to the last Flex Series case, it's less rigid since Phone Rebel decided to change up the quality of it, making it more flexible at the lip, and it's pretty apparent this time around. Also, its exposed edge design poses a risk and makes it obviously susceptible to scuffs, dents, or scratches. Now, the Pataka Mag Easy 3 and the Copycat Later case were certainly the two other least protective cases with exposed sides near the buttons as well as the top and bottom part of the cases. But from testing it out, the Mag Easy 3 offered a better seal at the corners compared to the later case which didn't require a lot of effort to remove the case. Overall, these cases will offer slightly more protection on the sides compared to the Flex 14, but not at the bottom and top part of them. As for the grip and fit, starting out with the thinner cases, the Pataka Mag Easy 3 won't be a challenge when putting it on your iPhone, but it can be a little annoying when taking it off, since it might feel like you're going to snap the case. But thanks to its durable build quality, it offers a really tight rigid design, so it will do a great job of sealing itself over your iPhone. As for the grip, it's like gripping your iPhone without a case, and I gotta say it feels really nice and sleek with an almost caseless feel to it. On top of that, the sides offer a nice patterned Aramid fiber grip. As for the Copycat Pitaka later case, it features a slimmer design and the grip was a little bit better than the Mag Easy 3, with a slightly more Aramid fiber pattern feel and grip on the sides. As for the fit, it was definitely more easier to put on and take off than the Mag Easy 3, as it's more flexible due to its really slim design. Now as for the Phone Rebel Flex 14, the grip was personally one of my favorites since it offers a true caseless feel to it with the sides being exposed when gripping it. And when it came down to the fit, it's an easier case to put on and take off compared to last year's Flex series with its previous rigid hard plastic build quality. Now as for the other cases like the Banks MagClap Hybrid, it offered the smoothest grip out of all of them with its soft plastic all around frame. And when it came down to the fit, it sealed the phone really well and was somewhat easy to put on and take off. Not too challenging. But one of the hardest cases in this review to put on and take off was the Mag Easy Pro 3. Since Pataka really wanted to offer a nice tight fit so it can securely seal your iPhone and offer that military drop protection. And it certainly will. But you'll really need to know the way of putting it on and taking it off since it's not like the other cases. As for its grip, it's not going to be like the Mag Easy 3 as the soft TPU frame gives it a more smoother grip. As for the mouse and Aramid fiber case, the frame does seem similar to the Limitless 4.0, but on the 5.0, there is a wavy grip design in the middle this time on both sides, and personally, it's a pretty interesting grip. And as for its fit, it's easy to put on, but will require more attention to properly seal it along the edges or corners at times compared to the other cases. As for when you're taking it off, it can require a little more effort than others. Alright, now with all that I went over on these cases, you're probably wondering what are they like with MagSafe accessories? Oh, you betcha, yeah. Well, in this part, I will be testing all these cases out with my Moth MagSafe wallet, 
and snap battery pack. And if you're interested in these, I recently reviewed them, so go ahead and check that video out right up here if you're looking for some accessories. Anyways, when testing them on all these cases, the Phone Rebel Flex 14 came out on top, and it certainly performed the best when conducting all the light shake tests with the wallet and the battery pack. They both snapped into place really well, and none of them moved out of place. After that, the Pataka Mag Easy 3 and Banks Mag Clap Hybrid have similar magnetic rings and both demonstrated the same results with the light shake test, with the wallet securely staying in place while the battery moves slightly out of place. Then the mouse and Pataka Mag Easy Pro 3 proceeded after with similar magnetic rings on their cases and they were noticeably weaker with the wallet holding up well on both of them but the battery packs kept falling off. As for the later case, it performed the worst with all the accessories falling off of it. Now, I also did perform tests with the Apple Charging Puck and the ESR 3-in-1 Charger, and the tests were in the same order like with the MagSafe accessories, where the Phone Rebel held on really well when adjusting it, while the non-magnetic ring later case barely held on to the ESR Magnetic Charger and Apple Charging Puck. So, based off those tests, it's pretty evident which of these will have the strongest magnetic ring and which one won't. And after testing out all of them with my Gauss meter as well, the Phone Rebel Flex 14 came out to have the strongest magnet, while the later case, which had no additional magnetic ring on it, exhibited the weakest readings with it barely providing any magnetic strength from the magnets on the back of the iPhone. Now, at this point, after seeing my whole review, you probably have a good idea now on which one you might get. The Hermit Fiber Mouse case and the Pataka Mag Easy Pro 3 were hands down the most protective cases, with the Banks case slightly behind them with similar features, while the Pataka Mag Easy 3 and later cases were the thinnest and lightest, with one having more features and the other one being slightly thinner. As for the Phone Rebel Flex 14, it's certainly a unique case with a sleek design but comes at a risk with its exposed edges. As you can see, there's a lot of differences between all these cases, but a lot of similarities in terms of fingerprint smudges. Overall, Aramid Fiber is a strong and durable material, and most of these cases will offer that even though some may be thinner and less protective. By the way, if you found this video helpful and look forward to more reviews like this one, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and smash that like button if you like this video. As always guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back here for the next one.